We all know in the crypto space, it is a free-for-all survival of the fittest for many companies. And let's be honest, some are not surviving. We're seeing many companies belly up, and they actually have to reassess whether the economics make sense to continue operating. So why is TerraWolf different from the competition? What separates themselves from a mainstream company like Riot or Mara? Okay, we will dive into all of that and show you why I believe this could be an incredible 10x investment long term. To start, I think it's really impressive how large they're going to scale. They already have 50,000 miners, including 44,500 self-miners, all ready to go with no additional payment obligations. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the competition for a moment. When they belly up, and we've seen a lot of them dwindle off, the banks that actually foreclose don't need or don't have any use for the collateral and are virtually giving away this mining equipment to companies like TerraWolf who can instantly plug them in to monetize. So when these companies belly up and they have no use for the equipment, the banks don't have any use for it either. They can't sell it. No one wants it. So they just give it away. And that's where TerraWolf also is going to thrive and be able to expand and use more equipment for essentially no cost. Okay, so that's already one huge positive here. As we go down, we realize they are an industry leader in power cost average across two sites. So they have a fixed cost for two cents per kilowatt hour for five years at the Nautilus facility. Okay, that's fantastic. All in all, this ends to a translated cost per coin minted of around $7,200. Okay, that's not bad at all considering Bitcoin is almost three times that right now. So they're definitely going to be doing extremely well as the happening comes, which I believe is March of 2024. Um, and hopefully we see Bitcoin start to have its next climb into that range. Um, but that's really where I could expect, you know, those revenues to really start to skyrocket. Again, um, one of the best things here is that they're able to expand. They have very low cost or the power cost, which really is one of the biggest things here. Wolf is very unique in that it controls its power generation, while most of its competitors rely on third party power providers. This allows Wolf to control the most important variable of the Bitcoin mining, which is the energy cost. So when we look at the industry leading cost profile cost profile here, so taking a look at this graph that we see, it's industry leading cost profile. And again, their targeted average power cost of three and a half cents per kilowatt hour definitely lines up to what we just said. And we know that there's a fixed rate for their other unit. But let's say this period right here where the end of Q3, we had a lot of issues in the second half of 2022. You know, there was pandemic, the war in Ukraine, right? All that stuff. So elevating the gas prices tremendously. This is where a lot of these companies started to belly up because they just could not afford it or the economics just didn't make sense to continue operating, right? In this time, you are going to sell off your only asset, which you are mining, which is Bitcoin. So imagine Bitcoin's at an all-time low. The cost to operate is at an all-time high. You're now selling off maybe 20 or 30% of all your assets or all your revenue that you're generating per month just to continue operating. That's not talking about paying people or whatever other costs that, that are involved in it, just simply on the energy itself. So that's a big issue. This is, again, where TerraWolf thrives as a 40% lower than the industry average cost. And again, locked in for two cents on their Lake Mariner facility. So really, uh, I think this is the key, the bread and butter to the entire video on where they're going to dominate, how they're going to outlast their competition, and ultimately why I think they're going to be a dominant force in the years to come. Next, we have to talk about sustainability and scalable sites. Now, this is another part that actually separates them from the competition here is their ESG market advantage. So what we saw back in November 22nd of 2022, New York State Governor Kathy Hochul signed into legislation which restricts the issuance of new air permits for proof of work mining operations sourcing energy from fossil fuel power plants. Now, this has no effect on operations like Terra Wolf Lake Mariner facility because they do not source energy directly from a fossil fuel plant, but rather, and this is the key here, 91% sustainable zero carbon energy from the grid. Okay, this means Terra Wolf is unaffected by the backlash of carbon emissions and even excessive carbon tax. Now, we know many of Wolf's competitors have actually been forced to shut down operations in restrictive states like we just mentioned, New York State, which affords Wolf the opportunity to scale their market share. 
So taking it a step back, we just mentioned what happens when these companies foreclose. The banks have no use for this equipment. Now we have another problem that comes up. What about carbon tax? That's going to be more cost to operate. Now you might actually not be allowed to operate in the entire state alone. Now you're in big trouble. So Terrawolf is just going to gobble up that market share. It's just going to, hey, you know, we'll take that equipment right off your hands because you have no use for it. Cost them nothing. They plug it in. They're ready to make money. It's it's like the best thing you've ever heard of. I mean, it, it almost seems like it's too good to be true. But really, you know, no one else has any use for it. So they're just giving it to companies that could actually apply it. So awesome. It, you know, it, it kills two birds in one stone here. Now, Terra Wolf, they actually generate domestically produced Bitcoin powered by nuclear, hydro and solar energy with the goal of utilizing 100 percent zero carbon energy. This is awesome. Everyone knows management is the determining factor in the naked short war, whether they're going to step up and be vocal and fight for their shareholders. In this case, I believe the top priority for this company is to improve fundamentals, to outweigh their competition, and again, to be a dominant force in the upcoming years, which I have no problem with. I do believe in due time, they will get on board with West Christian, Buyins.net, Share Intel, you know, getting a real grip on what the number is, where the shares are moving, all those good things that we want companies to do if they want to fight back and protect their shareholders. Now, again, not everyone is going to just instantaneously be open to the idea. A lot of people have, you know, 20 or 30 years in the market. They've never had to do these types of things. So it's going to take time, I believe, with Terrawolf. It's not just going to be this overnight 360 turning into Roger Hamilton or Jeremy Frommer. Um, but I definitely do think, you know, based on the people that have told me, this is a really strong executive team, you know, really well-qualified individuals for their job description. And I do believe in due time, they will get on board with those practices and and doing anything they can to fight back. Um, I definitely trust, you know, what I hear. Okay, do I know if this is a fact? Do I know if they're, you know, ever going to take bad paper? I don't, but I do believe that, you know, they have learned from their experiences in the past. Yorkville definitely has had a huge restraint on their share price. We know that they are just nasty, toxic loans. Same way how we saw with Geneva Roth and GTII. It's always these debentures. It's always the share agreement or what they like to call stock equity purchase agreement, SEPA, which again ensures a stock discount once equity conversion time comes. They're always trying to dilute. They're always trying to attack the company. And most executives don't even realize where this comes from. It comes from the people that are closest to the company, the people that are lending you money or giving you money, raising capital in some way. Why? Because it's a liability. It's something that they're actually able to short against. You know, that's their collateral is your liability on the books, is your debt agreement. So now that that has been paid off, the debt is fully paid off since December 12, 2022. Press release came out, super bullish. And again, stock gets destroyed, down 50% in pre-market. So we know those same players are there. But again, the fact that they have no ties to the company in paper anymore is definitely a good thing. It traps them the same way it trapped Geneva Roth when they have a large short position because they're going to improve fundamentally. They cleared out their debts. They're going to improve. I believe they're going to definitely outweigh their competition. They have a much better business model. So so it's definitely going to put them in a precarious position. You know, we know there's a regular shorting activities. Does this raise the question for a potential short squeeze opportunity? I think yes. I think 100%. Yes. Yorkville is known. They're documented to be nefarious people. There's a lot of questions that can come up with Yorkville and, and what's going to happen with that. But I'm not going to take this play as a short squeeze play. I'm not going to look at it as a swing. I'm more going to look at it long term. I think that's very important to do. I don't believe that this is just, you know, this overnight get rich quick stock. I think this is one that you look long term and you really get to watch it flourish. OK, that's not every stock. Some are just to trade. Some are just to swing, you know, options and big board stocks. We just we day trade them, scalp them. But in this case, you know, we really want to let this play out. You know, I would like to see this play out until, you know, probably mid 2024 at, at the minimum. You know, I'd want to see this play out. So uh, that's sort of my time frame on it. Um, I definitely think without a question, uh, there is a lot of potential here, uh, especially when it comes to these other companies. So I want to compare, you know, other big players, like we said, other names that are more socially aware. Riot's current market cap is $1 billion down from $6.8 billion all time high. Riot does not control its own power. And the problem they face in Texas is they're expected to be curtailment for the winter for miners in Texas as the grid faces a higher demand for power greatly reducing their net operating margin. 
Mara, current market cap, same around a billion, down from 7.1 all-time high. Mara does not control its own power, nor does it control their own mining operation. They rely solely on third-party hosting. They believe that locked-in good price would compute North for hosting, but then compute North's power costs spiked, and they couldn't meet the terms ended up going bankrupt. They had to take a big write down and now they're scrambling to find a new host provider, which is not looking very good for Mara. Essentially, they have no control over the two major variables when it comes to Bitcoin mining. So that definitely does not look good for them. Now, Wolf, they have a market cap around 140 million down from 1.7 billion all time high. Wolf controls its own power and controls its own mining operation. According to Wolf CFO, the valuation of the current energy infrastructure exceeds 85 million and the two cent kilowatt hour fixed price at their Nautilus location for five years is worth around 70 million alone on a mark to market basis. Essentially, Wolf used this market downturn time to build out infrastructure and operations. It's now fully able to monetize their operation and fix low cost energy. Their core assets are currently worth more than their market cap. We see that a lot with penny stocks where they have more equipment value than they're actually valued at, um, which is insane. Uh, so I think, again, Wolf is a stock that is extremely slept on. This is a 10x potential banger, in my opinion. Uh, there's just so much upside. And I don't really think that this is screaming endless amounts of downside. They did the dilution. They raised capital. They got everything they need. The stock took a huge dive. Um, and we'll talk about the charts in a moment. So now I believe is the time to accumulate. Now's the time to go long on it. Again, not financial advice, not telling you to buy or sell. You always have to make that own decision yourself. But in terms of me, I have taken positions in the mid to high 60s, 68, 69 range. This is a small starter position, very light size. Okay, we are going to accumulate. That's the goal. It's to start with just a little skin in the game. As it goes lower, we buy more. It goes to 60, buy more. 50, buy more. Whatever that might be until we dollar cost average down to all time lows. And then again, I think we could we could finally go long on that looking a year or two at minimum down the line. Okay, and hence I said minimum. TerraWolf is extremely undervalued on just fundamentals alone. It's ready to monetize and it built its infrastructure and has a high probability also of a short squeeze possibly playing out now that the Yorkville loan is fully paid off. Wolf stock is majority owned by insiders and management who all have restricted stock, which helps enable no major shareholders, which could dump or dilute the stock, which is again, fantastic. Okay. It shows that they're looking long-term. They have no desire to sell the stock now, which is incredible. We've seen other stocks like AMC where the CEO dumps 30, 40 million million shares and you know keeps raising capital and it ends up destroying all the momentum in the stock so to know that that's not going to happen anymore or at least for the next year or two i think is absolutely fantastic um, i don't believe they need any money i don't think they have any desire to raise any more capital i've made sure of that before i posted this video um so yeah I, I think that's really incredible and as we see bitcoin miners continue to go out of business wolf has the runway to take that market share like we just said as the competitors die, more Bitcoin hash rate for Wolf to earn. The energy costs appear to only be going up. And again, that's going to work for their advantage from a profitability perspective. Again, as long as everything remains constant, right? As long as they're not taking on any bad loans, as long as they're not diluting any more than they said they wouldn't, right? As long as nothing has changed in the story, I think we're definitely headed in a really healthy position here. And I think the future is extremely bright for Wolf. Okay, currently Wolf is producing about five Bitcoin a day. So let's just say it's 20,000 a day, revenue of like two to three million a month. Okay, and that's amazing. Now, as this hash rate goes up, they're going to produce more Bitcoin, say 15 to 20 per day, which is again going to double or triple that revenue per month. So that's amazing. And as that Bitcoin goes up to 20, 25, 30,000, you know, they're going to produce more revenue, showing massive operating leverage to the upside, again, with that relatively fixed operating cost. So Wolf is definitely in a whole nother category compared to other stocks. I think that it's not even close when you look again down the line it's not the next day or the next week or month it's years down the line um i think you could definitely see that go back to old levels so let's look at the charts really quick and then we'll end this video looking on the daily chart we noticed that there is a huge gap down a few trading days ago um that was announced after there was some dilution or a capital raise 
um, that would help them get through the next, you know, two years, essentially. Um, so I'm not mad about it long term. Um, obviously, just momentum was really killed, you know, as the stock went from 55 cents all the way up to 117 in a relatively short time. Um, I don't know the percentage there. Let's see. So 55 all the way to the top. That was about 120 percent gain. Um, and then basically all that momentum just got destroyed right off that press release down 40 percent gap down. Uh, so that definitely upset me a little bit short term. And, you know, again, I'm going to be honest about that. I uh, really was not happy because I was looking about going long on Wolf. Um, I'm glad I didn't. I'm going to actually end up buying the dip. So uh, that's pretty much what we're dealing with here. I think, again, this this makes a better case um, for our 10x potential. I will go on camera here and say this will be a 10x stock. 100% you will see 10x or you will see this trading at uh, $6.64. When? I don't know. Um, but I definitely believe that this will happen. We will look back at this video one day and say that, hey, here's your 10x. OK, so right now, uh, this is the time where I accumulate it. I'm not telling you to accumulate here. This is not a financial advice, not to buy or sell. You have to do your own research before ever taking a position or exiting a stock. Now, again, here, you know, is the time where I feel like I can hold something Warren Buffett always says is, you know, if you had to close your eyes and wake up two years later, you know, and not be able to buy or sell the stock, would you be okay with it at this price? And the answer for me is yes, 100%. Yes, I do believe in a year or two from now, this will be way different from 64 cents. I think it'll be way above, you know, multi dollars here. So I'm not actually mad at all. You know, even if I bought this right now at 60, 69, it went down to 60 cents, I wouldn't be mad, I'd buy more. If it went to 60 cents and it came down to 55, still, I'd be happy. 50, 40, 30, I'd still be okay with losing 50% of this position, knowing where it's going to be long term. Okay, I don't think anyone here could time the bottom perfectly, but I don't see a ton of risk in terms of uh, that, that ratio there. I see much more reward than risk in this section here. Okay, that's my two cents. That's my personal opinion on Terrawolf. Um, overall, I think, you know, I, I, overall, I've been very transparent about how I feel in terms of the competition. Again, the executive team is something where I'm not 100% confident on, uh, on, on how they're going to take a stance. I was told by people that I trust that I think that eventually they'll get on board, but it's not their top priority. Their top priority is improving the fundamentals and the structure of the business, which again, is nothing wrong with that. I just think in this, you know, market, in this environment, you know, if you want to really excel and you want to, you know, you know, be on, be on the top or in the spotlight, you know, you definitely have to be vocal about it. But again, I think that's something for another time because, you know, we're looking at this as really a long-term investment where we can grow wealth as opposed to just trying to get a quick flip, a quick 10 or 20% like we would day trading options or day trading, uh, you know, a volatile penny stock. You know, this is not very volatile. So, Again, uh, just a few things to take into note. Overall, I'm very happy I got to share this information with you. If you know anything about the mining sector, if you're interested in Terrawolf, or maybe if you know about the company, leave a comment in the section below. Let me know any opinions or thoughts you might have you know, on this company. So appreciate you guys for sticking to the end if you made it this far. Hope you guys enjoyed Terrawolf. Have a great day. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.